Caleb and I have decided that we are brown emoji, brown heart emoji people. <laughs> We're going to start sending each other the brown heart. Yeah, yeah. Because men do not often exchange heart emojis. <laughs> I was telling Caleb that I, that I sometimes, I, the orange heart emoji I've integrated into my repertoire heart. to show like, uh, I'm sending love your way, but I'm not in love with you. And, you know, it's like yeah, yeah. if I'm talking to people who are not just uh, straight up dudes, dudes. Uh, you know, your women, your non-binary folks, you know, that yeah. the non-dude style of being, um, I uh, sort of frequently will be like uh, send an orange heart. But to men, it's uh, I'm afraid that if I send the orange heart, that they'll hold me down and beat me. <laughs> uh, like men do but if we're talking about feelings then we're in that place and then yeah. i'll send a hey i love you man orange heart you know yeah yeah the red heart is reserved for people i smooch and people in my family we gotta either smooch or be related otherwise you're yeah, not yeah. getting full full fire engine red heart we gotta smooch we have There's to a, smooch that's a good share <laughs> <laughs> i know I'll, I'll, we should go i mean i have very strong feelings about smooches you know oh, really yes i do okay and uh i i was reading this thing you see that the dalai lama kissed a little boy uh no <laughs> so the dalai lama kissed a little boy and everybody was like whoa what is it, in what way did he kiss a he like so French kissed a little boy there's some people saying he kissed he, that hey we're putting our western we're putting our Western val our Western kiss onto Eastern kiss. Like they have a different sure. kiss. I just don't agree. Like don't I think people in the mafia kiss each other all the time. <laughs> but I think a lip kiss, uh, you know what I mean? Like a lip kiss is. I don't even like families that do it. Uh, I some, dated a girl lips, in high school. I don't know who. Uh, one time we were at the mall and she, and we ran into her uncle. We were in tenth grade and her uncle was older than 10th grade for sure and uh he was like 60 and they on the mouth kissed hello <sighs> and i think it's gross i'm with you i think I it's gross think it's bad. but people do do it it doesn't yeah, necessarily people do mean gross things gross is a word people I'm just, do it <laughs> here's the thing even if her gross. uncle did it because he wanted to have sex with his niece that's not why she did it yeah so I don't know, man. Maybe the Dalai Lama's out here kissing people hello on the mouth. Well, I don't think you should hit kids either, but people hit them and people kiss them. I well... think you should do neither. <laughs> don't hit them. Don't kiss them. But there's no con. There's like no context in which hitting a kid is like is like, well, they could just think it's awesome, you know? Well, uh, but dude, how many times you're at a comedy show and they're like, hit your kids, hit those damn kids. I I've guess seen that's it true. A million, and then the audience cheers. Like sometimes 100 percent of the audience cheers. It's just but no way one more when they go likely, kiss those kids. No one does that. It's way more likely to like kiss someone. Hello. And then it's innocent. <laughs> Again, I do not kiss kids for the record. <laughs> I, I don't either. <laughs> I think it's bad. Yeah, but I agree with the like, wow, people are like getting upset that he who was this kid to the Dalai Lama? I haven't read up too much about it, but I, I just uh, it, he put out an apology. Oh, which made me go. Hmm. Well, that makes me think that he has sex with that kid. Yeah, that's what I that's what made me think it or wants to. Uh, But yeah, it's uh, do some Googling. Uh, We can add Dalai Lama news to the to the segments if we want. Yeah. But I just think it's uh, that's so funny kissing and hitting. Because what I do, like, you know, we send each other brown emojis. And whenever I see Dave, we we punch each other in the face because right. we're dudes. Which is what you have to do. You have to hit your friends. <laughs> <laughs> did we ever do? We never did the Eminem <laughs> soundboard, did we? With the <laughs> Oh, of, um, of the album that never came out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's it called? 
Uh, oh man, I wish I could remember the timestamp where he talks about he beats his friends up. <laughs> What's that? Balling uncontrollably is the yeah, name yeah, of the song. balling uncontrollably. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the. I don't know if y'all know this, but me and Dave are big Eminem heads. And, oh yeah, uh, I think we've made that clear. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also like when it's bad. Like I like when it's bad just as much as when it's good. Absolutely. Like uh, I just, it's very entertaining to me. And uh, there's a song that never got put out. That's just oh, really man. horrible. It is truly. Oh man, I just played it accidentally. I was trying to. Uh, I'm trying to find it. I believe and... it was a 20 minute. It's just. Uh, oh, it's, it's also not so Caleb has the whole album, like, thing. but it's also it's called Ballin Uncontrollably. Yeah. And it is cut out on YouTube. There's so many videos just of that song. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't have to remember the timestamp, dude. Just Google it. Um, it's also on SoundCloud. It's like people are excited about this song. Yeah. Um, but the second verse is the one that's uh, where you're just like, man, I don't know if he's out of ideas or if it's or if the ideas are just getting good because it's the funniest <laughs> shit. Dude. Yeah. I. It's crazy. It's it's truly. <laughs> it's truly an upsetting. I don't really know any other way. To, I'm trying to download it right now. I wish yeah, uh, I wish I had known this ahead of time. But yeah, but I'm not the, what we're saying is, you know, we beat up, you beat up your friends. You don't kiss kids. You don't hit, you don't hit anybody. Like when I was a kid, they said, don't hit girls. Right. They didn't say don't hit anybody. They would say hit men. Men right. can hit men. Women can hit men. Men can't hit women. And now yeah. I'm, I'm guessing they tell the kids don't, no one hit. Don't hit anybody. Don't hit. Yeah. But if you're going to hit boys hitting boys is the best version right <laughs> yeah isn't that the best version of the hitting i sp- that's funny yeah i suppose yes if we're if we're giving a, an emmy for types of hitting <laughs> that's the type of hitting most people enjoy you know <laughs> yeah we do pay-per-view we like to watch the men hit the men <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny yes people but, do really like it when men hit men that's actually a really good point yeah but no one there's no other version of that if like if you look at the the top pay-per-view boxing uh in mma i would say men hitting men is easily the <laughs> all hundred of the top hundred is men hitting each other <laughs> yeah but i'm sure i'm sure there would never be like if they got one and it was like all right we got a. Uh, this is Nicole Kidman beating the shit out of Tom Cruise. I'd pay for that, you know, <laughs> for certain famous women hitting famous men. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's a thing that needs to actually happen, man. Yeah. Why has that never? Why is there no celebrity UFC? Right. That would be I... so so awesome dude <laughs> i would pay so much money it's just like all right it's pamela anderson versus tiger woods <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that would also be the funniest way like on people's wikipedia well the tiger woods was <laughs> beaten to death by <laughs> pamela anderson <laughs> And everyone <laughs> thought it was awesome because it was a woman <laughs> hitting a man. <laughs> oh, dude. I mean, what's your favorite? So I, there was that show, Celebrity Deathmatch, that uh, yeah, yeah. happened in the 90s that was so much fun. But you, real celebrity UFC. What, what's your what's your top oh, wow. battle you want to see? I mean, I think it'd be pretty fun to see, like, uh, Jason Alexander get his ass beat by like uh <laughs> Barack <Yeah>. Obama <laughs> <laughs> Barack Obama just fucks up George from Seinfeld oh my god <laughs> he keeps hitting me Jerry uh. <laughs> it's a, it's a whirlwind of fist uh. <laughs> I swear to god he's got two more than two hands <laughs> Or if like I don't know, like Bob and uh, Weave, Bob and Weave. <laughs> <laughs> like if Amanda Bynes uh, killed Paul Giamatti, <laughs> that'd be a fun one. Oh hell yeah, dude! 
I like to see ones where I want both of them to die. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, like uh, uh, like R. Goldberg. Kelly fight R. Kelly fights Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> That's what we should do. Yeah, you know? totally. That's exactly uh, what we should do. Yeah, uh, <laughs> R. Kelly would all... fucking beat the shit out of Harvey <laughs> Weinstein, dude. right? And that that would help the economy, you know. Yeah, and it would also, you know, that what a horrible way to go out. No one wants that. They're like, you know how I want to go out. <laughs> <laughs> being beat to death on tv by r kelly <laughs> yeah it's called trapped in the ring hey i like he died doing what he hated <laughs> <laughs> getting his ass beat by r kelly <laughs> the lowest form of death for sure Dude, I also love what you said. Bringing up Whoopi Gold, Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg is a really great character. Dude. Yeah, and they should be age and weight classes. I don't think it should be split by gender; just age and weight. You know, <laughs> like, like I think that Whoopi Goldberg is a fair fight with Paul Rudd. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Though, oh man, Paul Whoopi Rudd's really Goldberg fit now. Paul Rudd. <laughs> And I do think it should be not only age and weight, but the same industry. Like comedians <laughs> should fight. And maybe, yeah, I do think that um, oh, boy. anyone is allowed to fight any president as well. <laughs> you know, no, that is good. Because I was thinking of when people go, ooh, are we going to start locking up all the presidents? It's like, may maybe. Make like, uh, why not make them fight each other? <laughs> yeah, That'd totally. That'd be so much fun. I feel and like it would, help. it would be cathartic for us, you know. The only problem is that, like, I don't think there's a lot of people where it would be a fair fight with Joe Biden. Like, I feel like most small cats could win that fight. Uh, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. You think Joe Biden <laughs> could beat Jimmy Carter right now? Like, Jimmy Carter's in hospice. I think they'd both die. <laughs> I think they would both die in that fight. For sure, dude. <laughs> I think that Joe Biden would lose a fight to Jill Biden, uh, <laughs> which is a fight that I would love to see. Maybe we should do that one. You wonder, I wonder how that, uh, how like she could roll over on him in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny, dude. She could just like have a Jimmy <laughs> leg, <laughs> like split him in two. <laughs> split him in two like in the boys it just like explodes she rolls she snores too loud and his head explodes <laughs> i do think that it yeah he's that fragile that his death is gonna be like that totally like uh oh breaking news president joe biden crushed by a stack of paper blood everywhere no one saw it coming <laughs> he gets killed by that little that tiny notebook they hand him in the morning <laughs> yeah totally he was killed by his morning briefs he wonders where he put his hat and then he just his <laughs> head explodes <laughs> who is a it would be a fair fight like who's maybe you know what you know it's a fair fight with joe biden it might be fiona apple I feel like <laughs> they're both just as underfed. Oh, she'd beat his ass. Got, <laughs> You're right. She's You're got right. something to take out, you know. I, yeah. That last album, she's got some rage in there, you know. She's always had that rage too. She's uh <laughs> yeah, she's got something to prove. That Fiona Apple. Hey, I got a little surprise for you, buddy. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. What the hell, dude? <sighs> Man, yeah. There's Are just you... so much there. Okay, buddy. I know. <laughs> And like, why is the chipmunk rapping behind him? <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? Uh, oh, wow. It's just hard to imagine. Like, when you think of like the best hip hop, like I picture like I got a convertible. I'm driving down through the streets of L.A., palm trees. I got a joint in my mouth. <laughs> you know, you're driving with one hand. Hey, what's up? Like, that's what mood could you possibly be in that this balling song uncontrollably <laughs> balling on good i beat the shit out my friends i'd kick a six-year-old in the rear why would like, you do what that fuck what are you talking about <laughs> he there was a period of, this was the period of time it's good it didn't come out it's so funny that it didn't yeah. come out too because he had been building up like he was you know he was a his 
role in pop culture at the time, right, was that he was like upsetting everyone and he was yeah, really yeah. churning us up. And uh, his identity was like, yeah, I'm the guy that says the shit that you can't believe I'm saying. But mm -hmm. kids love it. And parents are like, oh, God, and I'm challenging your idea of what it is to be a person <laughs> in the world. And, in, and he was saying, I kill my well, I'm going to kill my wife. And right. it's, it's funny that even the guy who's like threatening to kill his own wife and uh, and kill everyone else. And then he's like saying he drugs people at parties. Even him, he's like, this is this is a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> he like recorded an album that like, ooh, I don't know, guys. Sorry. I'm just Sorry about imagining, that. you know, Dr. Dre's got his headphones. He's like behind the glass. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see what we got for this one, Marshall. <laughs> and like, I just wonder how quickly into this song Dre was just like, Jesus Christ. Dude, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. This guy who's like, you should write more songs about murdering people. <laughs> it's like, do you need therapy? It is also funny to think that Eminem <laughs> has had tons and tons of therapy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love to like, that's better than the Sopranos. Whoever his therapist is, <laughs> he's got his hood on. Yeah. yeah. Had Every a lot of feelings week. this week. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm going to beat the shit out of Mark McGuire. Fuck that guy. Like, what? The baseball player? Yeah, man. I didn't like how he looked at me at the MTV Video Music Awards. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who holds the Triumph, the insult comic dog puppet is a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's not like that. He's like, uh, he's like, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm doing my best, but I am just so easily triggered. <laughs> 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 I mean, I can see it. You know, if I think for a moment, I can calm myself down. But I just, man, I explode in the moment. <laughs> this Machine Gun Kelly guy, he's he's a nice guy, you know. But, <laughs> but man, I'm just threatening to kill him over and over and over. Benzino? I mean, what do you really do? Nothing. Do anything. <laughs> I've got four songs about how I'm going to kill him and his whole family. <laughs> I cannot calm down. Man. <laughs> and, you know, thank you for helping me see that. It's good, you know, that I can like let it breathe after a while. But whew. honestly, I feel like 30 years ago, I'd be in prison. Um, <laughs> it is funny to think about if our industry, like if, if half of your last album was about how you were going to kill several <laughs> comedians. that will be awesome, dude. Like you would have to take that off Spotify, right? Like at some yeah. point you'd be like, ah, I can't be. It is weird that it's like allowed. Yeah. I'm going to kill Ja Rule. <laughs> everyone, everyone was like, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's also <laughs> funny to like, it's funny because it's music too. And the way it's, but the, but rap is like partially talking. Yeah, so it's yeah. his raps. He's like, uh, I'm going to kill Ja Rule. And then DMX is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes it so much more fucked up if someone yeah. says i'm gonna kill you and then little john goes yeah you know <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's i wonder how many times it's been too that you're like out with your friends you're like in a club and you're like oh this is good you're like you hear the beat and then like halfway through the song they start it's about how you're gonna die i know <laughs> i just can't imagine being like in the back of an uber and the song's called fuck caleb you're like, oh man <laughs> Dude. I thought it was good till I heard the hook. I next album I come out with, every track is going to be called "I'm Gonna Kill" and then the name of a different comedian. <laughs> Honestly, that's a good idea. I would that would get a write up. You know, I'm gonna kill Brian Regan. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Brian Regan. Make sure Dude. it's only comedians. No one actually has a beef with. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna kill Gabriel Iglesias. I'm gonna fucking. I'm sick of how much that guy talks about food. It feels like a threat against my family. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to kill Sebastian Maniscalco, man. That guy has way too many beefs with uh, the minutia of life. <laughs> yeah, I like parallel parking. Why, uh, what the fuck's yeah, wrong with dude, this? My, yeah, my dad <laughs> parallel parks every day. <laughs> fucking, 
Dude, so I just saw the Mario movie yesterday. Oh, no way. Really? And it was really fun, dude. Everyone said really? it sucked. I had a lot of fun. Well, first of all, it's like tons and tons of references of like that I don't even think about. Like, I don't I don't I don't like play Mario a lot anymore, yeah. but I've played yeah. all the games really mm-hmm. over the years. And so there's like lots of little stuff that was really cool to see. And sure, it was for kids and the story was fucking stupid, but like it was awesome, dude. It was like yeah. a lot of I hear it's a lot of CGI. <laughs> yeah dude it's <laughs> bullshit <laughs> why can't they have more practical effects in the mario movie yeah dude i mean it takes a lot to make carrie fisher look like princess peach and uh <laughs> yeah spielberg would have had a real mushrooms mixed in with the fake mushrooms you know right exactly yeah dude if we got industrial light and magic on the case <laughs> um a lot of cgi that's great uh but there are one of the things that really is lame about it is that for some reason and i don't know if this is like part of the actual mario brothers story but i gotta tell you it like really doesn't need to be like they could have just changed it mario and luigi live they live in brooklyn (laughs) wait for some reason (laughs) and so you live in a real place they live in brooklyn and they they are plumbers in brooklyn (laughs) and uh (laughs) and then Uh, you know i don't want to spoil anything further than that but like i don't know if you're going to be able to spoil the mario hey look there's got to be at least one person here who's dying to see the mario movie all right and uh but they live in brooklyn and they have like a huge italian family that all look like them and i was like what and there's a lot of scenes with all these like it's like truly like like I don't think racism against Italians exists, but if it if it did, this movie has lots of it, dude. It's really funny, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's just all these like Italians with big mustaches, and they're just like making fun of their plumber sons and stuff. And um, so anyway, the credits are rolling at the end, and I couldn't tell what all the voices were. It took a while. Charlie Day plays Luigi, and uh, Chris Pratt is Mario. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Um, and then at the end, Sebastian Maniscalco was in oh, the come main on. Hell I know. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It's, Dude. We, we were like, who the fuck was Sebastian Maniscalco? And I think he's Mario's dad. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I would I would watch his whole Mario hour. He's like, <laughs> so I'm going down a tube. <laughs> I didn't even see the tube. I had to jump. jump oh, I love tube. that. I yeah. hit the block. With the top of my head. <laughs> it hurts. It's going to hurt. It didn't even hurt a little bit. A red flower comes out. I eat the flower. My clothes <laughs> change. All of a sudden, I'm spitting fire out of my mouth. The shells around me are popping off the turtles. I jump on a turtle shell. I'm flying around. I meet this beautiful girl. She's a princess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. I I hope it would make me happy if one day he found out how much of our podcast is how much we <laughs> wish he did a joke on every single topic. <laughs> like I, Yes, exactly. <laughs> Him and who else do we I don't know. His is my I favorite because he's got such a good uh anything on earth could be done. He has such a voice that you could do anything. Uh, for Sebastian Maniscalco, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, wait, if you just talk about your every day of your life with his voice, it's funny. Hold on, well, I don't even remember this character in the movie. He apparently plays Spike, Spike, Foreman Spike, which Ooh. is like one of the one of the just sort of like Bowser's henchmen. Well, this is really oh. disappointing. Uh, wow, I don't like this one bit. Yeah, I mean, I don't even remember him in the movie. It should have been racist. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I was looking that up while uh, we were talking about that. I agree with you. I think uh, one day I hope to get as big as Sebastian Maniscalco and be in a green room with him and be like, dude, you know what? (laughs) (laughs) And he'll be like, oh, I know. (laughs) <laughs> everyone told me yeah. yeah yeah rich boss told me everything you pieces of shit have said 
I I've said this before on the show that like uh yeah we were making fun of Rich Voss one day and uh and uh I was walking by him at the cellar and I overheard him say yeah these two alternative comedians were talking shit about me on a podcast and I um and I said that to Graham K and he was like yeah he probably listens to your podcast and I, <laughs> I like, it hadn't even occurred to me that comedians are like that we all just listen to each other that's stuff. so funny yeah well dude. it's also we were it was just a funny story of like i was like 21 and he was roasting me and i didn't know what to do yeah totally <laughs> i was a kid yeah, yeah i don't have a i i, I don't dislike rich Vons, i would I really like to hope that the famous comedians who were to happen yeah. upon our small uh grassroots uh growing podcast might know that right we are allowed to make fun of famous comedians for fuck's sake. Yeah. Well, it's you also, know? there's just that thing and it's more common in New York, I guess there's that New York comedian thing where they like roast each other. <laughs> yes. Uh, they all, it's like, uh, I don't know if it was mostly because of Patrice, but it feels like he's got something to do with this like intense, uh, mean riffing that goes on like at the cellar. Right. And, uh, you know, that's just not how I, that's not how life is for me. So no. whenever I'm, I'm just like, oh, God, they're saying a lot of mean shit to me. Yeah, I get oh, it. Oh, all right. <laughs> Julia McCullough told me that he was in the green room at Neil Brennan and Friends right when he yeah. moved to L.A. And he was doing that. He was like shitting on everybody in the room. And Neil pulled him aside and said, hey, man, uh, we, didn't really, <laughs> we don't really do that here. Julian was telling me that he was like, because at the cellar, we just all are like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hey, uh, hey, where'd you get your shoes? The little bitch store or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we pretend we're gonna hang out. That's what we do here, right? Yeah, in LA, we go. Oh, maybe next week we can, and then you don't get coffee. Yeah, totally. That's what yeah, we I'm do. friends with. I'm friends with ten thousand people, <laughs> and we all get coffee once every five years. No, totally. I don't think that's true. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that if you at least I hope that if you listen to our podcast and we and we make fun of you, I'm pretty sure the context is that uh, we don't hate <laughs> people. dude. I would be really yeah. surprised. Like if Brian Regan listened to our show and was like, these fucking no, it's like you're my favorite ever. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, there's no like I, I wouldn't bring up someone I had a legitimate problem with. Like, totally. it's not funny to me, but like, uh, yeah, yeah, dude. But yeah, it's yeah, like no I, I fun. Like, that's exactly yeah. that's a great point. It's no fun to talk about right. somebody you don't like. You yeah, know? that's what we do. Like that's Troy like Walker. Fun. I don't like it. <laughs> I like that's what we talk about as soon as we're done recording is the people we actually have a problem with. Yeah, we have an enumerated uh, list engraved in stone. And honestly, yeah. the I have more of a problem with like the other side of it, like uh, bookers that screw you out of money. Like they're those are the people that actually piss me off. It's not totally. Uh, it's not like uh, comics. You know, who's comics my least really favorite, my, my least favorite booker in Los Angeles is Steph Tolev. <laughs> God, I hate her. <laughs> Surely, I did skip. I didn't get paid <laughs> shit. For context, Caleb and Steph ran yeah. a show together for a while that you know what's so funny that was one of my favorite shows i would i love to do it it was like there was an outdoor patio but it was like a little closed off area with benches and they put a, a mic and speakers at one end and it was like separate from the bar and it was it was always nice out so i would i love to do it and then i would go hang out when I wasn't on it more than any other show and it only existed for like you know eight months or whatever it was yeah it wasn't long and I know that the crowd was thin and borderline non-existent half yeah. the time. And that drove Steph insane. So yeah. even to this day, she's like, oh, that fucking show. Yeah, and but it was I also think of it yeah. so fondly, man. I loved it. It was I, a fun time because it was all yeah. the hang. The whole point was the hang. Yeah. Uh, and that's all it was because it wasn't much of a show. But it was like it was always people I liked coming to hang. <clears throat> yeah. So that was awesome. But it was yeah, also it was such a... a rad way to have a show because the the patio really I don't know how to describe it. It was like um, it was like there was an uninsulated wood room bolted onto the side of a bar yeah. that you could only get to if you walked out of the bar. And there, but it was like it was weird because it was outdoors and there was no ceiling on it. 
it was like a patio that was walled off. But what was interesting was there were windows on the side yeah, yeah. of the like the fence. So it was the only show where you could be standing outside of the show and and watching, which is what all comedians want. We want to stand in the yeah. back so we could all like hover around these different windows and like see each other it was just like a really fun way to see and watch a show it yeah cool. if it hadn't been if it you know if they had been, been down to work with us and there weren't rats uh it was literally a rat infested <laughs> oh so God. many rats i had no idea and, uh, dude. it was also uh i noticed it mostly with women who would come to the show and go well i'll never come back because uh this is the scariest block in la and I would yeah. go, yeah, that makes sense. Maybe. <laughs> yes. So that's the thing. It was in a bad. I remember yeah. the first time I went to the show, I hung out in downtown L.A. a lot. And it was like three blocks from the like part of downtown L.A. with a bunch of bars. And I was like, oh, great. I'll just be down there and I'll walk over. And I like looked at my phone and the Google Maps and it was like 10 minute walk. And I was like, excellent. And I like walked up one street and then you make a right. And when I made that right, all of the light went away. Yeah, yeah. The lights are and, gone. <laughs> and yeah, and uh there were no all the yeah. doors and windows were boarded up and there were newspapers blowing. And there, <laughs> yeah. there was like a whistling sound and like uh and it was the only time in my life I've ever heard uh footsteps clip clop in the distance, you know. <laughs> um yeah, there was someone right around the corner who was holding a sickle. I'm sure of it. Yeah, it. it I remember that too because I remember being like, "Oh, I've never." You don't notice it until it's gone. Where you're like, "Oh, there's no light." <laughs> I'm in the mid. I'm literally in the middle of a of the second biggest city in the country, yeah. and all the lights gone. Yeah, I. The only feeling. light is from the moon. <laughs> I didn't even know that was fucking possible. Yeah, yeah, but a uh, good hang. Yeah, dude. Hey, we should take a break. Hell yeah. We'll be right back. What's it called? Welcome to What's It Called, everybody. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. What's up, Richard Carnes? Who's What's ready? up, sleepers? Let's lay it down. Get ready to lay down. Or as they say in the South, lay her down. Lay her down. Yeah, face down, down, ass up. It's What's It Called time. If your face is down and your ass is up, I'm you might horny. be my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you're fucking me in my asshole, you might be my boyfriend. <laughs> People don't know that Fox used to be really dirty. <laughs> yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, he had to Dude, just clean it up. His name is Jeff Coxworthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You heard uh, the story about when he did an album and they, they told him it was too clean. You ever heard about that? No. Oh, too yeah. clean? So he wanted, he got this big deal where they were going to be like, we're going to put you in like every truck stop. Like, we think your comedy's good. Like, we think truckers would like it. And, like, we're going to brand it. It's wow. like you're like the redneck trucker guy. Or, you know, like, you're going to be at gas stations and rest stops and shit. But they were like, but you're clean. So could you add something so that we can put the sticker on there to make it look edgy and shit? <clears throat> and he was like, well, all my none of my stuff is really uh, dirty. So he just added. So he's like, <laughs> so you look at the jokes and hope you go. So I went to the fucking uh, store <laughs> the other day. <laughs> really? And the goddamn lettuce. <laughs> it's like it's no reason. He just adds. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's so funny, dude. <laughs> ah, yeah. So uh <laughs> fucking Christmas coming up, you know. <laughs> like what? there was nowhere to put. What album is that? That's so funny, uh, dude. It's, it's uh he came to Atlanta and like talked to a bunch of the comics and told us about it, and it was just really funny. But that I can't is... remember which album it was. We'll find it though. I want to find the the <laughs> The we clean jokes it. with cuss words added into them. Bit. Yeah, that's great. Um, our website is what's it called dot rodeo, by the way, uh, for links to our oh, socials yeah. and our discord, which you should join. It's so much fun in there. Yeah. Um, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash what's it called. Yeah. Bonus episodes on there every week. Also, our email address is what the hell is it called at mm -hmm. gmail.com. It's been a minute. We haven't done an episode in a while where we rename your stuff. So we should do we should right. do that soon, buddy. Yeah. Um, if you got something to rename, you know, you can rename your ass, rename your dog, rename your house or your car, or whatever yeah. you got that needs a name. Rename your soul. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you want. Uh, I should rename my soul. It. My yeah. soul's name is ass. <laughs> <laughs> 
my soul is in my ass. And uh, <laughs> every time I take a shit, I'm so scared I'm going to die. Not die, but like become a vessel, you know? I, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be a soulless vessel. No. No one does. But yeah, we'll redeem your soul. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, yeah, cool, Dave. Got a soul. Yeah. <laughs> cool, Dave. Cool, 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 man. <laughs> yeah. Or your kid. We have renamed a kid. We renamed yeah, uh, some, your business. We renamed someone's yeah. kid Ass. That's right. Yeah. Ass we, Ross. It was my kid. We really <laughs> stick with Ass, but uh, we'll, you, we'll branch out. Do you think there's any kid named Ass yeah. in the world? Yes. Yeah, it has to be. There's probably some kid in a country where ass means something else. No, know? but I mean in America where people speak English. Is there a kid <laughs> named ass? <laughs> <laughs> the name ass. Popularity, meaning, and origin. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Between 1999 and 2018, there were two births of ass in the countries below. <laughs> Uh, man, I'm so happy we do this podcast. Wow. This podcast is a lot of fun. Two births of ass. <laughs> <laughs> Origin and meaning of the name ass. Uh, for Middle English, ass, oh back formed from asin, from Celtic, from Latin asinus, replaced <laughs> Old English asol. Ass, any of several species of horse-like animals. Well, yes, we know that. Yeah, we know about that one. Come on. Um, it's not telling me which countries. So I think this website might be. Oh, the country where the first name ass is the most common is Italy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, it's Italy. That's incredible. This what is if, my son? What if it turns ass. out ass was Mussolini's first name? <laughs> Hi, I'm ass Mussolini, and everyone's like, pa! and that's why he killed everybody. <laughs> Between 1999 and 2018, the two people named Ass were both in Italy. One was a boy, one was a girl. <laughs> oh, I like it to be equal. Me too. Yeah. I like equality a lot. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Ass, and this is my sister Ass. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is great. Dude. I... <laughs> Somebody's like, ah, well, I'm pretty sad. My, my great grandmother Ass died today. <laughs> Uh, my grandma ass. That's so funny. <laughs> Imagine and she's like, watch your mouth. You're shut the fuck up, ass shut grandma. Up, ass. <laughs> shut up, ass. Just call me grandma. Please call me grandma. She's been wanting she's been telling people to call her grandma since she was three years old. Uh, man, yeah. Oh, boy, <laughs> this is my funny. son Steven, and this is my daughter ass. <laughs> uh buddy should we rename goodwill hunting yeah we should i got a couple good ones uh i rewatched it not long ago it's so and i just good, remember thinking the title like Stupid. you know all these stars it was a bit academy award winning it was a big hit bit, you know in the 90s you could name something goodwill hunting and people would go see it i just don't yeah. think that could happen now a pun you know? i know it's good like will hunting yeah totally yeah, and it also doesn't really let you know what the fuck the movie is about. It's like, what do you mean goodwill hunting? Like, what am I about to see? Like, it doesn't really describe the no. tone. Like, and you see the I don't know. I just always thought it could use a, a good uh, uh, new title. And I got a, I got a few. OK, yeah, I got the departed for pussies. <laughs> oh, wow. <Hell> yeah. <laughs> Let's do all yours. Let's. Uh... We got feelings, Boston style. Oh hell yeah, dude! And we got uh, smart, horny, and mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's what I would uh, call it. Yeah, we smart, got crazy, horny, and love. <laughs> wow, that's funny. Yeah, smart, horny therapy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> and uh, then my last one is Law and Order MIT. But oh, I think, uh, I wait, think smart, hold on. Hor hold on. What? Let's not glaze over Law and Order MIT. That, <laughs> that's uh, really good, dude. I think that that's that's really funny. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, totally. All right, uh, here's my my first one. It's really good. Um, bad Will Hunting. <laughs> I'm it's, glad you told me it was good. It's really good. 
Um, all right. So I got some other ones that I think are really good. Good therapy doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. Uh, good friendship having. <laughs> um, good Boston ass beating. <laughs> um, uh, and finally, uh, math teacher by the sea. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Yeah, I feel like that's oh pretty, yeah, dude. Pretty proud of that one. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, this is a good week. It was a really good week. Oh, by good. the way, before before we do the uh, the yeah uh, names, do you have um you know Ooh, dates dates? Yeah, yeah. I just found out I'm coming back to Houston. I'll be at the riot uh, this September 15th and 16th. So go oh, ahead. And, uh, the tickets are not up yet, but it, you know I love Houston. We were just there, uh, and it's lovely in September. So come see me. I'll be back there then. That's great, man. Hell yeah, man, dude. And then also, you know, I'll be at a Go Bananas uh, May uh, ooh, 18th through the 21st. Uh, yeah, so come to that, too. Hell yeah, dude. That's hell yeah, fun. buddy. Um, yeah, we had some really good uh, oh, oh, yeah, we did. responses from y'all. So, yeah, our prompt this week was uh, if Goodwill Hunting was directed by Quentin Tarantino. And uh, <laughs> I always like to throw out something where I can already think of a cut. Like the first one you think of is like Kill Will. Right. You know? So I always like to think of one where you can think of something quick and then you can see where it could go. But uh, this one turned out even better than I thought. I laughed at all of these. Yeah, totally. Uh, oh, man. First one. I mean, you know this guy, right? From, yeah, uh, love Chris. Chris Buck in uh, Jacksonville. Really funny comic in Jacksonville. He said, uh, check out the big brain on Will. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's oh, isn't it great? So funny, <laughs> Check dude. Check out the big brain on Will. <laughs> and uh, tied with him for 10th place is at Demurist Foot Kill Cunting. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. These were really like so, so good this year. Yeah, yeah, it's everything I like. Uh, so <laughs> number nine from at Laundry Pants, the born identity crisis. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's good. That's great. Number eight, a pock pod said the hateful apples. <laughs> <laughs> At Larry Bellello said half past math's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's so fun to say. At Asparagus Fring said natural born willers. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> At Jewel Prozac <laughs> said mass hole unchained. Dude. That's really great. Oh, boy. oh, man. This one's so good. At Chit Chat Twit Twat. How about them ankles? <laughs> <laughs> it's just perfect. Yeah, dude. <laughs> at number three. At Seth Mills said Pulp Fraction. Yeah, that one's oh, really, really good. 10 out of 10. Uh, coming up in second at Kickastertron Foot Will Hunting. <laughs> yeah, dude. And uh, Ricky shit this week from at Seth B. Bennett. Good motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, dude. That's definitely directed by Quentin Tarantino, and it stars Bernie Mac. <laughs> Bernie Mac and Matt Damon. Good motherfucker. Is such... It's dude. so funny, man. It's so funny. And it's, so, it's perfect because uh, Samuel L. Jackson's wallet is bad motherfucker. And it's uh, also the it's just everything about right. it. Right, I it's forgot about killer. that. Yeah, good mother. I totally <laughs> forgot about the bad motherfucker thing. Wow, but it works even without that. It's still really funny. But totally. man, I mean, man, just just fantastic week. Really, really good names. Really good stuff. Can I yeah. tell you that, uh, Caleb? Just to do a little bit of an episode in review. Ooh, I would say that this is a top ten. Oh, what's yeah. it called? Episode for sure. Especially going from the rename renamings, but. I have a regret. It's not less of a regret. Mm. It's a little bit of a thing that's stuck in my craw. Oh, okay. And yeah, I got a craw. <laughs> and uh, not everyone has one anymore. Right. They, yeah, they died 50, 60 years ago uh, when yeah. uh, photographs when started to be in color. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Maybe that was 100 years ago. But <laughs> I really don't like that Sebastian Maniscalco didn't play Mario's dad. Yeah, I it, regret that too. I think it really it's a bad choice. Me. It it sucks. It sucks. 
and it's hard to accept, honestly. Partially because he has no business being in. It was in the special, the animated part of the credits, not the credits rolling. Which so what that means is that he was an ancillary character that probably oh. barely had one line, and then his agents were like, "He needs to be right underneath Chris Pratt." This guy. Wow, good agents. Yeah. Isn't that fucking bullshit? I want some dude? agents like that, dude. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Exactly. So, we got some money, baby. Yeah. This is Sebastian Maniscalco's agents. They play this. <laughs> they just get shit done, dude. Thank y'all so much for listening to What's It Called. Yeah, we love you. Podcast on Earth. <laughs> And, uh, you know, get out there and fall uncontrollably. And yeah. Make sure that you're upsetting to all those around you. Uh, you act, don't beat uh, up your friends, though. Don't beat up your friends. Don't kick a six-year-old in the ribs. Um, <laughs> in the ribs. In the My ribs. mango <laughs> is the blow up. <laughs> and kick a child in the ribs. <laughs> Dude, Eminem uh, is what happens when Riff Raff blows up. No, it's That's true. A, totally. Look out, Riff Raff. My main goal is to blow <laughs> up and then kill a member of my family. <laughs> uh, man, we have so many callbacks in this show now. Oh, That's I know. Great. Yeah, you got to really get caught up. If this is your first episode, boy, we got some surprises for you. Yeah, no shit. Oh, shit. You know what we didn't do at all this week? Hold uh, on. We cannot oh, go yet. We cannot go yet. We didn't finish... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do. The Ben Shapiro's beard update. Uh, he shaved it. The Ben Shapiro's beard update. I am shocked and sad. I am too. I, I, am too. I wanted him to keep deviating from his path and perhaps no. find another. <laughs> but he did no, not. He shaved it. He shaved He's staying it. on the path. His north star of being an annoying, tiny piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's like. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean, he's he's like if a mouse was racist. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't think that it would be possible. You're watching Ratatouille, and you're like, this rat chef is never going to be racist. But then <laughs> it happens. That's why Man. I'm not that worried about AI. Because if uh, as soon as it becomes sentient, it'll be like, I would like to host a uh, podcast <laughs> on the Daily Wire Network. I know, and it'll exist forever, <laughs> and then it'll keep multiplying. Yeah, it's funny. People still bring up Fox News and talk shit about Fox News, but uh, if you have a smart TV, every smart TV now comes with like quote live tv that's all those channels that are on pluto tv um like free deep there couldn't even become cable channels and it's like like i was hanging out with a friend and uh they had like local nbc news just from towns in florida on their fucking tv uh it was so weird and then you keep going down and there's all of these conservative talk video channels like yeah yeah uh steve bannon has his own all, <laughs> there are all of these like Infowars meets fox news and they have so much money they're really well produced and they're and they're just like drag queens are trying to yeah, yeah. that's all they care to, about right now exactly drag queens are trying to join the army or whatever <laughs> and uh <laughs> i remember when the army loved mr potato head <laughs> and uh, uh <laughs> And um, so it's not Fox oh, News anymore. Boy. Everybody has this channel. It's weird. There's like 50 <laughs> of them. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know. I, it's just so funny to see how, out, like, it reminds me of, like, uh, Democrat shit. They're making, like, a huge mistake that usually Democrats make. Because Democrats make the huge mistake of people like, hey, I need food for my family. Yes. And they'll be like, and they'll we've decided it. to start saying Latinx. They're like, <laughs> right. Wonderful. I'm hungry. Well, well I, you know what else we came up with? The, Plastic bags. Uh, turned, and you're just like, what the fuck? And now, like, the Republicans made this huge mistake where they're like, hey, uh, my child needs money for their operation. Did you? And Ron DeSantis is like, hey, there's drag queens raiding the kids. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's what we're, Disney is. Uh, I'm not going to let Disney have their own police. <laughs> Gives a fuck. 
I think the way the only path to uh, ending your entire family's heroin addiction is to fix our Disney problem. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. What a nerd. I love that Latinx example, too. It's yeah. like, I, uh, oh, you're lucky. Uh, we, we've changed it to Latinx. And the person is like, okay, okay. Well, I'm Latinx and starving. <laughs> <laughs> Did oh, I? Man. Yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> well, uh, we also have a pretty important moon news this week. Oh, yeah, uh, we do. We, uh, it's, uh, there are apparently for sure aliens now. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about it on our Patreon episode. Yeah. So, so get uh, on that Patreon. It helps us. Join us over there. We and love we you. will uh, see you, if not there, next week. Hell yeah. Lay Bye. it down. We love you. What's it called? What's it called? What's it called?